Omicron infections continue to increase both here in South Korea and more rapidly in many other parts of the world. South Korean authorities are working on increasing efficiency in the healthcare system, which is under tremendous strain right now, and on developing new PCR tests that can detect Omicron within 24 hours. To fill us in on the COVID-19 updates here in South Korea and around the world, our reporter Kim Yun-sung is here in the studio with us. Good morning, Yun-sung. Good morning. So, Yun-sung, let's start uh, with the COVID-19 tally for today. Right. So, like we start, on, like how we start on most days, new cases um, logged up to 9 p.m. Wednesday stood at around 5,308. It's more than a thousand cases, fewer than the tally marked at the same time Tuesday and the same time last week. The total tally announced Thursday morning will likely be over 6,000 new infections were detected among young unvaccinated children, with another cluster infection arising from a daycare center in Yeouido, Seoul. 16 young children and three adults have become infected. Now, the shortage of ICU beds, uh, this problem has snowballed in recent weeks. We have talked about it uh, on many a new day at Arirang. Uh, but are there any plans in place to try and resolve this issue? Right, just to fill you in on how serious the problem is. So as of Wednesday, there are 278 ICU beds left nationwide. Authorities are working to speed up the turnover rates for patients in ICU beds so that the people who need the beds the most can get them as quickly as possible. As part of this effort, authorities have ordered 210 patients who've had more than 20 days of treatment to leave their ICU beds. Medical professionals will redirect these patients to other hospitals or other hospital beds, but if the patients refuse to, remove, refuse to move out from the ICU beds, they'll be fined according to the Infectious Disease Control and Prevention Act. Now, Yonsen, let's focus more on the Omicron variant. How are South Korean health authorities um, handling this threat? Right, so health authorities are developing new PCR tests. Contro uh, Central Control Headquarters said Wednesday that they're currently developing a COVID-19 variant test kit that will quickly identify all five variants of concern, including Omicron. So the current PCR tests in South Korea aren't really able to pluck out the Omicron strain from the other COVID-19 infections. So currently, scientists are using DNA sequencing as a method to detect Omicron, but this process takes four to five days. So authorities are finding it difficult to knit the virus spread in the bud, especially when dealing with a virus that spreads as quickly as Omicron. The new PCR test that the authorities are currently developing will give results in a day, which will provide more ammo to health authorities who are looking to prepare a early response. Okay, that's, that's potentially good news, but let's uh, broaden our horizons and look at the situation as it is outside of South Korea right now. How are other countries faring, particularly in terms of the new Omicron strain? Right, so Europe has been hard hit with Omicron and the UK has seen another record high of infection cases Wednesday local time. Their daily tally soared above 100,000 for the first time. Uh, Fran France may not be too far from seeing a similar situation. The French health minister projected that their daily cases may jump from 70,000 to 100,000 in the near future. He also said that Omicron may become the dominant strain as early as next week, as it already accounts for about one-fifth of the new infections in its capital city, Paris. Germany's health experts said that it may take around three weeks for Omicron to take over as the dominant strain. And the German health minister mentioned the need for a fourth COVID-19 vaccination shot. So it's been almost a month since the Omicron variant has, we learn, we learn about the Omicron variant. So um, were there new findings from scientists about this variant? Right, so Morgan, I'm kind of happy to end this report in a slightly more positive note. So day after day of seeing Omicron back surges in infections, Cases in South Africa seem to have simmered down recently, and experts say that South Africa may have gotten past its biggest hump in infections. After hitting a record of 27,000 daily cases, the tally dropped to 15,000 early this week. The downward trend seems to be continuing, although it's too early to draw any definite conclusions, and despite the fact that the daily tally is not an accurate measure of virus behavior, 
scientists are suggesting a rosier outlook, that Omicron infections may come in a short wave. And the good news is that Omicron hasn't really brought severe spikes in hospitalizations and deaths. Take a listen to an expert's take on why she thinks Omicron has been quick to recede. It's that we had a lot of infections, so people really start creating immunity in the community, and uh, so the, there are not that many susceptible uh, individuals that uh, will be uh, will be infected. So it's. Uh, Epidemiologically, it makes sense. All right, Yansen, thank you so much for your report today. We'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.